Hey gang, what's happening? We got interrupted putting the drive belt on this Murray, which is no easy task. They never make it easy, do they? And what did I get interrupted by? Well, I got interrupted by that B10 right there. We're going to be rolling it off, doing a little bit of carb adjustment, and uh, we'll pop the camera on while we're doing it. We got Muggsy here. He's kind of a character, so there he is walking up this way. But we'll catch you guys in just a minute. Say howdy, Muggsy. Say howdy, Muggsy. What the hell you got? Oh. My YouTube videos. Go ahead. What you got Use there? That. I don't know. It's a box, isn't it? Oh, it's a piston? Yeah. I'm sure I can. I'll have to look the number up and see which it. Uh, there's a couple. I think it's there's, for there's, a can. Okay, there's some seals. Did you need those seals for no. something? No. Well, because you'll do it. <laughs> yeah. I think that's for a 10. 20 over. Yep. Piston for Briggs. Roll pin's missing, but that's all right. We can reuse the old roll pin. That's the rings. Right. Should be the rings. Nope, that's just the circlips. No rings. Well, you'll have to get some rings then. <laughs> yeah. I don't know where they'd be. That's just the clips for the king pin. Okay. But no roll pin isn't a problem. You can use the original roll pin. I'll have to look those numbers up to see, see which seal that is. Mm. You guys see the number there? Here's the number for the 10 horse Briggs, 20 over. As soon as I get the mill in here, I'll be able to bore it all. Uh, can you use that sometime? Yeah. Looks like all you used out of it was the main jet. Whatever. Yep. Then that's brand new, okay? Oh, a brand new three bolt. You might bolt. want to save that for me. <laughs> if I need it here, I don't know. Yeah, that's a early. That's a early B10. That's what this is. That's got the 23D in it. Yeah. So that's a nine horse. Right. Okay. Nine and a half, whatever. No, nine, right okay. at nine. Yeah. Well, let's go out and take a look at it. You say you got it to start, but it's loading up. Carbs loading up. Yeah, it's it was all uh, gas was coming out the. Uh, out the back. Nelson. Nelson. Oh. It was coming out. Coming out of the muffler. Right here. Okay. Going right down the points box. Okay. Well, this one's been done for a while, hadn't it? Yes. Is this and no. <laughs> yes and no. Is this this That's is the rear this end. is the one that broke the axle tube? So this, this is, is the one I stole. We have one from the axle tube. Okay. All right. I put the uh, the rear end from of this on that big tent. Right. Okay. Okay. And then this one here was out there in the block building. Right. I've got a receipt where there was eleven hundred dollars spent on this rear end. Wow. Okay. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. But I will say this much. That pulley there was new. Right. And there was some seals here that was awful shiny. Yeah, that's a different hub than what, usually it's a cast iron hub, so that makes sense there. Boy, that's a good tight bevel Ain't gearbox, it? too. <laughs> wow. Now, when you put this back together, did you uh, put the same shims in that were in it? Okay. Yeah. Because there is zero side play. There should be just a hair. But it, it should be okay. Did you put synthetic oil in both of them? No. Just regular gear oil? Well, 90 weight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, synthetic, and they'll shift like a dream. Okay. Well, see, that already had oil in it. Right. So. Right. Other than what moisture is drawn, okay. Yeah, they've definitely been in it because, yeah, 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 they've been in it. There's no leaks. No leaks. That's a good thing. Ain't it? All right. Ain't it? So this one was done, and then you stole... You fire, fire. 
I don't care. No, we'll go ahead and just back it off, get it in there. I'm wondering about this being grounded as to shutting off. Oh, so it won't shut off. As, yeah, right. okay, that's right, okay. And then, see, I don't have... You've got choke. I've got choke, but it, there's no, not as much travel. That's okay. It's just because this carburetor, the arm on it is real short. Okay. That's the only reason. And then here, that's all the throttle I got. Okay, well that's full throttle. Okay. You uh, see, it's half here. Yeah. And it's a 23D. It is missing one spring on the governor. Okay. It's missing a spring on you the got governor. One? Yeah, I should have one. If not, we can steal one from one of them I brought over. <laughs> one of what? 23Ds I brought over. Oh, yeah, yeah, the three that you brought over. Yeah, that's yeah. probably what we'll, or the two that you brought over. That's probably what we'll do. I'm curious why there's such big spacers on your blower. It sure is. Huh? See how big this gap is where my finger's at? Right. This screen should be right up against that pole. Okay, then there, that screen, that, that space where that bolt is, you're saying is long. Yeah, there's a spacer in where those yeah. bolts are in. This well, see, I was wondering why that, oh, that right there, that bolt right there just about rubs this belt. Yeah, it's just about on that pulley. Yeah. Real close. Yeah. yeah. Um. I'm not gonna take a son of a bitch back out, okay? Uh, it's it's not that big a job, but because you've got the hydro and everything on it, we'll leave it we'll yeah. leave it there. I don't know if a guy could doubtful <clears throat> Okay, you might be able to take them be harder than hell to get back on. Take the bolts out. Yeah. Yeah, you might be able to do it just leaving it sit there. That screen don't have to be on there. You're not going to be doing any mowing with yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -uh. Um. I could take that screen off. Yeah. But think, yeah. you get your hands in there and just get those three bolts loosened up, and then you're just going to need you some shorter, shorter bolts. Yeah. And just take the spacers out, and that screen should just rest right up against there. So when you tighten those down, it'll just pull right up against their mounting See, spots. I'm not going to be mowing, so there ain't no sense of damn screen being on there, basically. Right, right. I could cut it off. Yep. As far as that goes. Yep. I don't know. Maybe that'd be a winter job. Yep. Taking that off. I don't know. All right. Well, guys, I'm going to shut the camera off. We're going to head inside with this and see what we come up with. All right, gang, real quick, just to let you know, and also just to show you what did I do with the flashlight. I had it. There it is. Um, I'm running the tap, the pipe tap in. I'm going to show you the condition of the threads before I run it in too far. You guys can see the threads are almost non-existent in here. You see that? So we're going to try to get some threads cut good so that we can get the muffler installed and get it locked down properly but I'm gonna pull the carburetor off and when I get it off we'll get over to the workbench kick the camera back on and show you what we find here it's been sitting how long Muggsy? two to three years okay it's been sitting two or three years and it's just loading up with fuel so our guess is that the float is just kinda of stuck and gummed up and if it had residual fuel in it the fuel bowls probably gelled up from the ethanol gas so we're gonna get tear it apart and take a look at it and we'll do that together so stay tuned all right gang let's tear into this see what's going on with it we're going to have some fuel drop out here so i won't smoke just yet that's way too much fuel to come out of that at one time so the float stuck up. That would be my down. guess. Be down. Uh, yeah, it's stu it's stuck open. Yeah. <clears throat> Which relatively common if it's sat for a long time. Well, we could put that other one on and put it go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but let's right. let's see. Uh, let's just see what we what we end up with. I'm gonna take it out to do that. 
Guys, remember to use your specialty screwdriver whenever you're taking these out. Make sure you're seated in there good and there's no play. Then bear down good and hard on the screwdriver when you go to turn and take it out. And doing this left hand is going to suck because of my hand, but we'll get it. There we go. Back her all the way out. I've got specialty taps for these too. If the threads get messed up, it's a uh, what am I think it's a five sixteenths thirty two. Oh boy. Thirty two threads per inch. I'll bet that's cheap. No, and there's actually two of them that you get for two, two different car size carburetors like this. And the two taps, the set was $35. Ain't bad. Wasn't horrible, but... It won't break the bank, but... We're going to blow the tube out. Get her cleared out. Watch the smoke screen. Okay, we're clear. Now we're going to take the screws out of the top of the whoops out of the top of the carburetor. It's still coming out. Yeah, it is. Why I had coming out of the tank folds in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. It's coming out of the gas hole. That's what she said. That's what she said. <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm just cleaning the counter down here. Got to keep the counter clean. <clears throat> Workbench surface. Let's get these three screws out. Don't need a specialty screwdriver for these. Loosen all three of them a little bit at the same time. And then just back them out. Then we'll separate the two halves and take a look and see what we've got as far as a uh, Muggsy's just nibbing around there, isn't he? Hey guys, uh, thanks for all of the uh, attention on the latest video of the new motorcycles. Figured you guys all deserved a another tractor video, so that's why we're working on the carburetor here. We'll see Ouch! just how bad things are here in just a second. We'll see how stuck that float is. And it may just may just be dirty and gummed up, but we'll certainly take a look. There we go. I'm gonna separate the two halves. Gentle love tap. And we got her loose on one side. There we go. Looks like we might have saved the gasket. Oh. <clears throat> Got to be careful here and scrape that gasket. Make sure that we keep the gasket all in one piece. What's it catching on there? Oh, okay. It's catching on the needle. Well, let's relieve the gasket from the base and just take the gasket off with the top. We'll go that route. We may need to put a new one on there. Got her? Yeah, we got her. Okay. Let's take a look. It's moving. And it is lifting and lowering the needle 
but I don't know if you guys can see, we've got a good bit of rust and sediment there. Probably came from the inside of the gas tank. We see it, evidence of it right here too. Well, let's pop that fuel bowl off and see what kind of shape that is in. Or the float bowl rather, not the fuel bowl. Open door, have a hole oh, I wouldn't think so, but it's something that you always want to check. So you, it's easy enough. Just pull the pin, just like that, and lift it straight up out. That'll pull the needle out as well on a little spring. There's the needle dangling right there. You can see the rust color on that needle. Yep, yep. Would you try to uh, Carbon choke cleaner clean that? Yeah, we'll use the carbon choke cleaner on it. And then you give it a good shake. Nothing. That's what she said. Nothing at all. Okay. <coughs> Let's look at the fuel bowl. You see the discoloration in the fuel bowl. So I'm just going to clean everything up. And when we get it all cleaned up, a little bit of varnish showing up there too. See the varnish? Right in there. So we're going to clean all this up, throw it back together, throw it back on the tractor and see what we've got. Um, on your seat, it's a good idea to take a Q-tip and a little bit of polishing compound. Polish that up a little so that when you put the needle back in you've got a nice good clean surface. Uh, the polishing compound will just take away some uh, any of the contaminants that have gotten in there from it sitting for so long. So stay tuned. We'll get her thrown back together. It's just the reverse of taking it apart. You know, these are the first two things to go. These are the first two things to go together, and then you put your needle in after that. So don't forget to seat your needle really good. When I get to that point, I'll turn the camera back on. Hey okay, gang, I'm gonna show you what I do to the needle seat. I've got, a, yep, yep. I've got a Q-tip, and I've got my semi-chrome. Now, you can use semi-chrome or flits or any other type of metal polish. I just like to use semi-chrome. Everybody's deciding they want to talk to me right now. I don't get a text for the last half hour. Now, all of a sudden, they're texting me. I clip it in half. And then I stick it in a drill. <laughs> Tighten her down. Have the drill on low, and just a little dabble do. You don't need much at all. You guys it's like burrow cream. See just a tiniest little bit right there on the tip. See that? Just barely anything at all. We'll run it in there, and when we do, you'll see that the tip of this will turn black. Good lord! Are we ready? Start it in the hole and start. You don't need to go fast. You don't need to do it for a long time. About 15 seconds, usually good enough. You pull it back and it's black. Then you need to get in, just spray a little bit of carb cleaner in there, flush it out. I don't know if you guys can see how shiny that is in there. Let's see if we, yeah, we just about got a glint of it. You can sort of see. Let me get a flashlight. There's one right there. See, we got her nice and clean and polished up. So, let me get it together. All right, gang, we're to the point where we're going to seat this and I've seated them before and I've shown you guys before you want to make sure that you go tighten it bring it out tighten it bring it out do that four or five times and and then the very last time really crank down on it but be sure that your screwdriver is set really really well I'm gonna do this right-handed because of my finger on my left hand so loosen it tighten it loosen it tighten it and do that a few times what you're doing is you're mating those two surfaces between the pot metal and the emulsion tube slash main jet. 
So you do that a few times and then really give it a good tightening. Really get it nice and snug. And there you go. Now we're going to throw this back on the tractor and see how we are. Hopefully we won't have uh, a bunch of fuel spitting out all over everywhere. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Alright gang, we've been fighting gremlins for a little while. One, namely, the key switch wasn't grounded, so we had to pull the dash off, pull it up, tighten the nut on the back to get cut through the new paint and get it to ground good so that it would shut off. Uh, we've got the carburetor on, and we're going to see if she'll fire up and see what kind of uh, job Zippo did on the carburetor. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Muffler's just blowing out some moisture, changing the atmosphere, I guess. And uh, everything's all sealed up nice, no problems there. I do need to finish tightening everything up, button it up, and we can send this one on its merry old way. But there's another carburetor rebuilt by Zippo. And even though this is a B10 that has been put back to work, Muggsy just does incredible work on his restores. He's always real modest about it. So I'm just, he's in timeout sitting over there. He's, he's just, I didn't even put his face in it. He's just sitting there. He's in a timeout. Yep. But, I mean, you can see the quality of the paintwork. He does a really, really, really good job. And then when he's done restoring them, he immediately puts them to work which I think is just awesome. They shouldn't be babied and pampered and kept from getting used and scratched up. They're built to work. You agree? No. You don't agree? No. Well then quit using it. <laughs> <laughs> All right gang, that's it. Friendly Neighborhood Zippo. We will catch you on the next one.